Section 10.4, motion in two dimensions and example eight. In this question, I represents the unit vector due east and J represents the unit vector due north. So we know that they're going to begin like this. Is my I vector, is my J vector. And uh, a resultant force of three I plus eight J Newtons acts upon a particle of mass 0.5 kg. Find the acceleration of the particle in the form PI plus QJ meters per second squared. So since we are dealing with acceleration and we have a force and we have the mass, we can use F equals MA, where the force and the acceleration are going to be vectors. So the force I'm going to write as a column vector. So 3, 8 is equal to the mass, which is a scalar 0 0.5 times by the acceleration, which is P Q and as a column vector. So I can rearrange this on times both sides by two uh, to get rid of that 0 0.5. And then I'll have 6, 16 equals P Q. And there we go. We have our acceleration. Acceleration is equal to 6i plus 16j, and that's meters per second square. Nice and straightforward. Part P. We want the magnitude and the bearing uh, of the acceleration of the particle. So we want some sort of diagram to help us out. So if we were to put the origin here, and again, if we draw our i and j unit vectors like this, so 6i is going to be 6 across 16 up. So this is only just a sketch. This is where my direction or my acceleration is going. So this is 6 units this way and up. This is 16 units in that direction. So let's start with the magnitude or the size of the acceleration which we can write like this. That's basically just the length of this line here. The size of this line or this vector is going to be the size of the acceleration, the magnitude of acceleration. So we can just do Pythagoras on 16 and six. So it's gonna be the square root of 16 squared plus six squared. So if we work that out on our calculators, we'll get an exact value of two root 73. Or we can give this answer to three significant figures, and that would be 17.1 meters per um, second squared. Now for the bearing of the acceleration, the bearing is going to be this angle here, because remember it's measured from the north. So let me just extend uh, this line a bit up here. And then I can mark down the angle, which I'm trying to find. This is the bearing here, this angle. So what I might do, and there are other ways of doing it, is to find this angle here, and then do 90 minus this, this angle here. So the bearing is gonna be 90, it's a full angle here, minus this angle here. So I'll just write that down, bearing, equals 90 degrees minus now this angle here will be the tan inverse of the opposite over the adjacent so it'll be the tan inverse of 16 over 6 so we'll just work out that and see what we get and we get 69.4439 and so on so I'm going to use that exact value and just do 90 minus answer. And I will get an angle of 20.5560 degrees. Uh, remember, we write bearings as three figures. And also, we'll probably want to either write this to three significant figures or to um one decimal place so we can give our bearing as either zero to zero or sorry zero to one degrees if we uh might it like that to this whole number or we could give it a zero point zero two um 
0 to 0 0.6 degrees. So we could give it in either one of those formats. So we'll just highlight those answers there. So here's my bearing, either that one or that one. The magnitude, size of the acceleration, either one of those two. And the actual acceleration gives them as a vector is this one here.